<laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Calvary Chapel in Lindivo 30. I'm Pastor Ruben. Thank you for joining us today. We stream live on Facebook on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And if you're in a neighborhood, you can come and join us here at the church. And let me give you a little example. See, all these wonderful people are here. There's quite a few people here, which, which blesses me because I wouldn't come to watch me here. <laughs> but they all came out. I think it's because of the prayer that we have afterwards and seeking God together. So this is our little family here. And thank you for joining us. And by the way, Right now, we can all do a watch party if you'd like on your Facebooks. If you're watching on Facebooks, so I know some of you watch me live and on the Facebook, but you can do a watch party and people will, will watch, get connected, and hopefully want to join us on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays as we do this Devo. Now, this coming Monday through Friday, I will not be doing a Devo because I'll be at a conference and busy. I may do it on Friday, but I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, chances are I will, but just wanted to give you a heads up. Uh, but I will post something to let you know that I will be here. So, again, thank you for for joining us. Um, I just, if I can just take one moment. The Lord really uh, ministered to me this morning, actually last night, and I want to just say that. <clears throat> it's kind of hard <clears throat> that the Lord is good and you know he uses the strangest people and when I think about myself and my education my background and where I came from I, I would probably have never picked me to be used by God never and I still struggle with my speaking, my communication, wanting to give the best, but sometimes, you know, it, it's like sometimes it's formulated in my head and it's like, man, that sounds so awesome. And then when it comes out of my mouth, it's like, it makes no sense, you know? And I really, I really struggle with that as my flesh, but then I also know this, that God is good and that whatever I can do, to preach the gospel message, to get people to deepen their walk with Jesus. And really, that is my heart. My heart really is to get you connected to Jesus. Not to me, not to the church, but to Jesus. That's my heart. And if I can do that and God fills in the rest, then glory belongs to him. So I just want to say thank you for putting up with me, I guess, and being a part of the church and, and the work that you're allowing God to do in your life. So I really appreciate that. Um, just been really, really been being broken by the Lord these, this last, uh, as I said, last night and this morning. So, um, glory to God. Let's pray and we'll get into the Bible study. Father in heaven, we come before you, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that you remove all of me, Lord. Get me out of the way, Father, and allow your Holy Spirit to work in me and through me, Father. And that your precious word, Father, would flow forth, Father, with understanding and with application, Father, for us. Lord, would you change our desires? We have so many desires for this world, Lord. And yet this world has nothing to offer us, Lord, but emptiness, Lord. There's really nothing there. We think there's something there, as they say. The grass is always greener on the other side. But when you get to the other side, it's not very green, Lord. There's nothing there, Lord. And where we need to be, Lord, is at your feet, like Mary, again, sitting at the feet of Jesus and just receiving from him. And that's what we want this morning, Lord, to receive from our Savior, Jesus. Let it be him teaching us, Lord, as we go through Colossians and conclude this little letter, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. And I know this is a, a while away, but the Lord's been laying on my heart to, once we're done with revelation in our devotions we're going to hit the psalms cool. and go through the psalms uh for 150 days <laughs> there's 150 psalms but man i started this morning in psalms one and it just 
It's just so good there. And I think that it will comfort us as we go through the Psalms, um, especially if you're going through trials and, and, and personal situations. The Lord will comfort you. All right, so Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. Get your pencils, get your highlighters. Oh, we're blessed even more today. Thank you, Patty, for joining us. I just got here. <laughs> we're in Colossians chapter 4, Patty. Okay, so Paul is continuing on and concluding this letter to the Colossians. Uh, we ran into some difficulty, right, last time we met when we had to talk about wives submitting to husbands, husbands loving your wives, uh, servants obeying. And so he kind of con uh, continues that. You know, in, in, in the Bible, the original manuscripts, there are no chapters and there are no verses. So this would be one continual letter that Paul just wrote page after page after page. And the publishers have broken it up for us where they felt it should be broken up uh, so that you can find uh, scripture references a lot easier in verses and so forth. So probably I would say verse one of chapter four would probably go with chapter three, but they put it there. So we'll, we'll just use their, their reference because we use it every day. So masters, now masters, at that time um, and culture uh, would have slaves, literally would have slaves, whether it was Jewish uh, families who sold their children or themselves into slavery, um, <clears throat> they would own them for a certain amount of time uh, and they would be responsible for them to take care of them. And so they were masters at that time along with slaves. Today, we don't have masters, we have employers. And in a sense, you can kind of look at it that way. They don't necessarily govern over us, but they do when we're working, right? Because you can get fired for insubordination if you're not doing what you're supposed to do. You can get fired for talking back to a, a boss, you know? Uh, so there are some guidelines that we should have when we're serving employers. And God gives us those guidelines. And thank God for it because we want to know that 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 God is the one that provides for us and he has provided these companies, these places where we can go and work and provide for our family. And that's a blessing and we should be able to bless them. Uh, that is our employers uh, that we're working for too. So masters, give your servants what is just and fair, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Now this is interesting because he's talking about fairness, right? Make sure you take care of your slaves. Make sure you take care of your employees. I was just listening to a video by Kid Rock. I don't know if you guys know who Kid Rock is. Yeah. And he, and now this is a secular guy, musician, but he was, he was actually complaining and doing something about the outlandish uh, cost for concerts. Because you can go to a concert to see someone like him and pay $200. To sit in a seat, which doesn't seem like a whole lot, but he says it's a whole lot because you're filling their pocket. And he goes, and I don't want that. I want everyone to be able to come to see my concert. And so he's dropped his prices down to like less than $100 a seat. And he's done it by getting advertisers to come in. He gives out free coffee. And he's kind of trying to push that entertainment industry to say, we need to allow others to come in and stop being so greedy. Stop being people that just want to fill their pockets with millions and millions of dollars. Now, I like that attitude because it's not about him. You know, he understands that there's a, a fan base out there and he needs to take care of them too and, and be fair and reasonable with them also. So that concept is nothing new. And so as a master, you should be fair with your employees, knowing that we have a master in heaven. So how much more should Christians. And so if you're a master, you own a company and you have employees, you know, be fair with them. Be fair with them. Treat them with respect. Treat them with honor. Don't be screaming and yelling at them. Don't be pushing them around. Don't be getting upset with them. That's not a good witness. Uh, that's not a good example of Christ. Trust in Christ also. He is your master in heaven and he doesn't scream and yell at you. Our God is a God of compassion and grace and mercy. And you shouldn't do that with your employees. So saying that, let's move on. Verse two, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in chains that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. So Paul now encourages them to be in prayer. And we should be in prayer as believers. Uh, Colossians, there's so much to pray about. There's so much going on. I like the fact that this year, the Lord laid on my heart to have Saturday night prayer. 
And so far, we are in the seventh month, and every Saturday we have had prayer. I think I've missed uh, one Saturday because I was out of town. But it's neat to see people come in, gather together, and pray. Uh, sometimes there's a few, sometimes there's more. And then we added to it communion. So now every Saturday we partake of communion too and remember what Jesus has done for us by dying on the cross, giving his body and his blood for us. And I have been really enjoying that. Does it take a little bit of our time? Of course it does. But we have to reschedule things. Maybe don't watch that program. You know, uh, I don't, I'm trying to think of a program. I don't even know of one because I don't watch TV. <laughs> There's a Game of Thrones or something like that. I don't know if that's a video game or not. But maybe don't watch that program for one hour, you know, or rearrange your life schedules around that because how important is prayer? It's very important. Yes, yes. I was praying this morning here and I was just seeking the Lord and talking with him and trying to draw closer. And as I was laying there, I was laying right there in front of Jennifer and that cord is, is there. And I looked at that cord and I thought to myself, wow, that's just three wires that is insulated by rubber and it's just laying there doing nothing. It really has no purpose until what? It's plugged in. Otherwise, it can be rolled up, it can be put on a shelf, you can take it, put it in your vehicle, you can carry it with you, but it really doesn't do anything. It's not until you plug it in to the source and that end will then energize the other end so that the other end is useful for those that are going to use it. And I thought, that is what we ought to be doing, is praying to the Lord, plugged into Him so that we are useful to others. <clears throat> That's exactly what prayer is. <clears throat> it's not, by popular demand, as many might think, prayer is not somehow convincing God to do what we want Him to do. Prayer is about convincing ourselves to align ourselves to the Lord. As we've been going through our devos, we've realized that, that God is in charge of our life. We have surrendered ourselves to him. He is our master, and he's a fair and just master. And so we're, really, we are to be serving him. We should be asking in prayer, Lord, what do you want me to do today? What do you want me to read today? What do you want me uh, to um, change in my life, Lord? Uh, and then be submitted to that, being willing. And one of the things he wants is us to pray, whether it's in the morning, afternoon, or evening, whether it's praying without ceasing. We'll see that when we get into Thessalonians, one chap uh, chapter 1, verse 17, or chapter 4, verse 17. Pray without ceasing. You're constantly communicating with God as he directs you. Now, <clears throat> what are some ways of praying? We're all different. As the brother said this morning, we're all different. We all get ministered to by the Lord differently. Uh, so there's different ways of praying. You can, you can take time in the early in the morning, open up your Bible, have a cup of coffee, sit down and pray. Seek the Lord for wisdom. You can, you can you do the Lord's Prayer, right? You know, our Father who art in heaven, use that as a model. Start with our Father. Focus on Him being in heaven. He sits on the throne. He existed before anything ever existed. That's pretty amazing. He's always been, and He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He doesn't change and so his mind is not changed because we want him to change. He doesn't change his ways for us. We're to change our ways for him. And so we start with that. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed, holy is your name, Lord. Your name is above every other name. And we should never diminish your name by some swear word. Amen. And we should always be lifting up your name, Lord. Holy is your name. Hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. You know, Take that prayer and you use it as an outline to pray. That's a good way to pray. And then always end up with, Lord, give me the strength to serve you. Give me the strength, Lord, to be a light and salt to the world. Help me, Lord, in those situations when I am challenged to do right or to do wrong, Lord, that I may choose to do right in your power. But it comes through prayer. And then Paul says, as you're praying, remember me. Because I want the gospel to go out. I want to see as many people saved as possible. And if there's a door open, then help me to be bold and go through that door. And I may preach that mystery that, that people uh, don't understand. And it's a simple mystery. And that is, it's been revealed today that Jesus Christ came. And he died. And he resurrected from the dead. And we can have eternal life if we put our faith in him. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Everything's been done by God already. Everything has been set up already. All the work has been complete and finished. And all we have to do is believe it by faith. And he says, you have eternal life.
And then the sanctification begins because then now you continually believe, trust, put your faith in him every day as you walk with the Lord. So Paul says, pray for me. And we should pray for our leaders, right? We should pray for our president. We should pray for our cabinets, for our Congress, for our Senate, for those officials in our community. We should pray for our church leaders, leadership. We should be praying for them constantly. Now, he goes on to say in verse 5, walk in wisdom towards those who are outside uh, redeeming the time. In other words, don't waste time. People are lost. So share the gospel with them. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Um, <laughs> then that was a difficult one. That's a difficult one, right? It would be nice if we were all just gentle all the time, wouldn't it? <laughs> Good morning, brothers and sisters. How are you today? Oh, don't worry about scr that scratch on my car. It, praise God, hallelujah. You know, he, he, he'll take care of you. Wouldn't it be nice if we were like that all the time? I was sitting uh, at lunch with somebody, and you all would probably know him, know them. And we were talking about old life, and uh, the wife said, Oh, you should have seen him before. Oh, he's had an anger problem. You know, he's put his fist through a wall. You know, we had a hole, and we had to somehow cover it up with a picture frame, you know. And I said, So was that B.C.? And she goes, no, that was A.D. I'm like, after Christ? She goes, oh, yeah. Yeah, that was after Christ. And, and then she said uh, it was uh, A.D. Um, oh, was it attitude dumb? <laughs> you know, something like that. <laughs> and I thought to myself, wow, because I really respect that person. Wow, great teacher. Wow, so intelligent. And yet they had an anger problem when they were younger in the Lord. And I was really ministered by it because for myself I had an anger problem and maybe some would say I still do I don't know but I thank God that he doesn't discard us that he doesn't judge us he doesn't condemn us he doesn't say get rid of that anger problem before you come to me again you know he just embraces us because he knows that we're flaw skewed people Amen. that every one of us are sinners and fall short of the good there's not a fiber of goodness in us. You, the only goodness that's in us is Jesus Christ, and that's it. And when we realize that, I think that we can, we can tolerate each other a little bit more and have more grace uh, for each other. So Paul said here, let your speech always be with grace. So we can work on that, I'm sure. Then he's going to close up. Tychicus, who is a beloved brother, a faithful minister, and a fellow servant in the Lord will tell you all the news about me. I remember Billy Graham saying that when you stand before the Lord, he may say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the kingdom of God. And then afterwards he said, I don't think I'll hear those words from him. And I'm kind of like, Billy Graham? Of course you're going to hear those words from him. I mean, you have, you have been a prophet to this great nation of ours, you know? But as I've gotten older, and this was when I was younger when I first heard this as a young Christian on fire, zealous, doing everything that the word said. I mean, I was on fire. And as I've gotten older, I realize, you know, I've been faithful on the outside, but I haven't always been faithful on the inside. And I know he's probably not going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Oh, maybe you were faithful for 25 years in your church and maintaining it and preaching and all of that but your heart at times had been far from me. <clears throat> Faithfulness is more than just keeping the outside. Faithfulness is about keeping the heart right with the Lord too, because God is concerned about the heart. <clears throat> Verse eight, I am sending him to you for this very purpose that he may know your circumstance and comfort your hearts. With Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother who is one of you, you remember Onesimus, right? He was the slave uh, of um, Archicus, uh, Archicus, and he had run away. And then Paul had encountered him, divine appointment. He gets saved, and now Paul uh, has him as part of his uh, group there. And they're ministering. A faithful and beloved servant he is. And then verse 10, Ar Archicus, my fellow prisoner, greets you with Mark. You remember Mark? Mark, how he abandoned them along with Barnabas for a while. Now Mark's back again. Uh, the cousin of Barnabas, about 
whom you receive instructions, if he comes to you, welcome him. Wow, he, he changed his whole attitude because it was Paul that said, no, Mark can't go with this. He's, he, he's too young. He, he's not faithful. He, he's slothful. He, he's not doing what he needs to do, and he's wasting my time. And, you know, and there was a big contention between the leadership then. And now Paul's saying, look, this guy, when he comes to you, welcome him. Because he probably matured. He probably grew. He's probably become faithful in the Lord. And Jesus, who is called Justice, these are my only fellow workers for the kingdom of God who are of the circumcision. They're Jews, in other words. They have proved to be a comfort to me. Aphrodite, is, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, greets you also, laboring fervently for you in prayer, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. For I bear him witness that he has a great zeal for you <clears throat> and those who are in Laodicea and those in Hierapolis. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Now Luke, um, Luke has been with, uh, <clears throat> with Paul for a long time. Uh, he's helped Paul in writing the Gospel of Luke and also uh, the book of Acts. Uh, so he's been there, a physician, a doctor who took care of Paul while he was ill and so forth. So he was a, a, a great friend. Uh, it's good to have friends like that that stick it out to the end. Then he says in 15, Greet the brethren who are in Laodicea, Nyphus, and the church that is in his house. Now, when this epistle is read among you, see that it is read also in the church of the Laodiceans. And that you likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. So there's an epistle to Laodicea, and we don't have it. We don't know where it's at, but Paul makes reference to it. And by the way, this is evidence that you should be going to church and reading the Bible. Because what do you say? Don't just read it personally, but I want you to take it to the church. What church? The one that's scattered all over the internet, watching from their bedrooms? No, it's talking about assembling together and opening up the letter and reading it to all of the people. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about having church. So uh, I love little scriptures like that because it's, that seems to be a, a big contention today. You don't have to go to church. We are the church and you don't have to go to church. Well, because you are the church, you should be in church. You know, so much more. How are you going to pray for one another if you're not even around one another? How are you going to serve one another if you're not even around one another? How are you going to comfort one another if you're not around one another? You can't do that. Well, I can put a little comment there. I comfort you, brothers. You know, I love you, brothers. No, you need to be around them. Uh, iron sharpening iron. How does ironing sharpening iron? If a, two swords are separated by distance, how are they going to sharpen each other? They have to be with each other. So I love little scriptures like that. Look, and he says this very clearly. When this epistle is read among you, see that it is read also in the church. Make sure you read it in the church. Verse 17, and say to Archippus, the master of horses, so he may, he may have uh, been <clears throat> some horse trainer of some sort, uh, take heed to the ministry with which you receive in the Lord, that, that you will fulfill it. So what ministry is he talking about? Well, uh, obviously the ministry that, that um, or the office that Paul has given him there as a leader um, there. Uh, but the principle holds true for us. Whatever God has entrusted to you, make sure that you take care of it. <clears throat> make sure you're overseeing it. Make sure you do, as we saw Monday, we do it all unto who? Unto the Lord, right? We don't, you don't serve me, guys. Please don't serve me. Do not serve me. Serve Jesus. He, he is the grid of truth, not me. It's Jesus. And when you serve him, you won't go wrong. You won't go wrong. Because if you're serving me, here's what might happen. You might do something and go, look, pastor, look what I did. And I might be in a bad mood. I'm like, uh, you know, walk away. And you're like, oh, man, he's not appreciative. Man, <laughs> here I did all this work for him. And he's like, uh. You know, it's not very appreciative. No, do it for Jesus because Jesus is always appreciative. And he, he just takes his book and he says, okay, they did a job. Good job right there. And he, he's going to mark it and keep track of it. So when you get to heaven, he's going to just show you all the works that you did by faith to him. Your, rewards, your reward will come from me if you're serving me or anybody else. Because your accolades are trying, that you're serving for are from them. And if I say, great job, then there's your reward. 
There's your reward. Chuck would always say that. I don't want someone to reward me. I want the Lord to reward me. So normally he just kept his mouth shut. He didn't say anything. You know? And let me ask you this question. Have you done anything lately or maybe even in the past that nobody knows about? You've just done a good deed and nobody knows about it. Just you and that person. And maybe even not that person knows what you have done. I've done that here in the church quite often for someone else. There's people that come to me and say, hey, I want to bless this person. Could you somehow get this to them? Because I don't want them to know. And I'm the only one that knows. And so I'm like, yeah, I'll do that. And sometimes I'll wait. I'll wait for a week or two so that time goes by and then all of a sudden, you know, hey, here, what's that? You know, it's just a blessing from the Lord, you know? See, the Lord knows. He sees all things, right? He sits on the throne and he watches everything. So do it unto the Lord. Fulfill that ministry. Verse 18, this salutation by my own hand. Paul, remember my chains. Grace be with you. Amen. Did you know that Paul's name means little? It means little. And some suggest that Paul was a short man. <clears throat> but yet he was a powerful man. And he wanted to make sure that he wrote this letter at the end, the, 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 the goodbyes with his own hand. Some say he was blind, so it could be that he wrote really big. <laughs> you couldn't miss it. You know, but he also put in there, remember my chains. Remember, I'm in chain. Now, I don't think he was saying, remember, because I'm suffering. I think he's saying, remember my chains so that I can preach the gospel while I'm in chains. I think that's what he was saying, because he said it earlier. So he's not necessarily, feel sorry for me. No, pray that the door's open, that I preach the gospel. Amen? Amen. Thank you for, for joining us. Um, <laughs> amen. Someone just saw my shirt. California, in and out, only here. Well, I guess there's one in Texas, too, somewhere, someone said. In Oregon, too? Yeah. Yeah. I might go to In-N-Out today. You just gave me a little hunger <laughs> there saying that. <laughs> I'll eat a burger for you guys <laughs> that are commenting about my shirt. <laughs> God bless you guys. Thank you for joining us. Hey, if you have a prayer request, please post it or private message me, and we will pray for you all. Look at the crowd that's here this morning. So they're here to... Oh, sorry about that. They're here to pray. Oh, there's Manny. Manny, our residential cook. <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy and your gentleness, Lord. And thank you, Lord, that, that it's all about you, Father, and, and that we really need to <clears throat> surrender our lives to you. Because when we surrender our lives to you and we walk in your ways, there are blessings, there are peace, and there's rest, Lord. Oh, well, there's not a ceasing of trials and struggles, but Lord, you have given us that peace that you've overcome the world. This is not in our home. We're only here for a season. And our home is in heaven. And we're awaiting for that day to put on the new, the new self permanently, Lord. And so, Lord, let us keep our eyes upon Jesus. He's the author and finisher of our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And if you have no church to go to, Come check us out here at uh, Calvary Chapel Inland.